this tutorial is aimed at intermediate animators because it builds off of the center of mass knowledge and balance foundations that they have. I mentioned weight briefly in the flip tutorial, but it's a huge topic, so I thought it deserves its own breakdown. The body has its own center of mass, but it's also a collection of masses that all pull and push on each other. Uh, I touched on this briefly with the flip tutorial, with that point about holding your arm out straight into the sides and then moving it forward. Uh, this is because the arm has weight that the shoulder is pushed back. The force required to suddenly move this arm forward is the force that the shoulder feels in reaction. Of course this force is dispersed throughout the body, meaning that the movement they undergo isn't the exact same because the feet are planted. This extra force of friction brings the shoulder back and makes the arm move forward as a result. If the arm was weightless, then the shoulder wouldn't move at all. And if the arm was heavier, then the shoulder would move more. This concept I use literally everywhere. Uh, fights character acting, it doesn't matter. When a limb moves, it pushes or pulls the body. This is why uh, a spin kick pulls the torso in the opposite direction, why the upper arm doesn't always move smoothly, and why the thigh is pulled backwards in a walk. And this doesn't just apply to a single body either, which brings us to... If you take away just one thing from this tutorial, it should be that heavy objects don't move slow, they accelerate slow. Uh, a truck can move very quickly if given the time to speed up. Similarly, it will also take way longer to stop. Speed is just a number to tell us how fast an object is going. Velocity is the same information, but with a direction attached. So a velocity of 3 meters per second is not always the same as the velocity of 3 meters per second. And acceleration is the change in velocity from one moment in time to the next. Since heavy objects accelerate slow, it requires more force to move them. This means that the reaction force of the stick is greater compared to a lighter object moved the same distance. Since velocity has a direction, and acceleration is a change in velocity, the force is also required to change the direction of an object even if it's moving the same speed throughout. When a heavy object is carried by the stick, the stick's center of mass changes and so the stick must adjust their stance to get their center of mass above their area of balance. The area of balance is the area between whatever is planted on the ground. So the feet on a stick figure, for example. If the center of mass is above this area, then the object or character or whatever will be balanced, but if it's not, then the mass will start to fall over. The stick pulls the hammer closer and lifts it, but now they also need to put effort into stopping it and reversing its movement. What makes something look heavy is how much it displaces something in reaction when it's moved. This translates pretty nicely into the last part of this tutorial. Notice that it's not one stick being pulled over the other, more that the sticks swap places. Even though it's not a person, the same rules apply. When a person is grabbed, we can imagine them like one mass with a shared center of gravity. Because of this equal opposite reaction thing, the shared center of mass doesn't really move that much, comparing start to finish. They roughly swap places because I'm assuming that they have the same mass. If one was heavier, then their shared center of mass still wouldn't move, but the relatively heavier stick would move much less. Just like at the beginning where I told you your shoulder would move much less if your arm was lighter. That's all, let me know what other topics you'd like to see covered. See ya. Oh, and for more information on mass, I put a Vsauce video in the description. Lamau.